Hey guys, welcome back. And uh, this is the final video of our uh, the last few series of uh, videos where we were talking about image segmentation using traditional machine learning. So until now, we uh, managed to train a random forest algorithm using uh, a bunch of features that we generated from our training image. And uh, now is the time to use that saved model and uh, start segmenting multiple images. Okay, so first of all, uh, first uh, let's jump into the code that we have from earlier. And one quick thing I want to show you is uh, I have a few folders here under I, I took a subset of uh, all images, you know. So uh, if I go to all images, I should have about 500 different images right here that defines this entire volume, the 3D volume that I am trying to segment. So of those, I randomly picked a few images and dumped into a folder called train images. And then uh, our goal right now is to segment them and put all the segmented uh, images into this uh, folder. Obviously, that's empty right now. Uh, but uh, let's fill that with uh, the segmented images uh, uh, that we're going to do in a minute. Okay, so uh, just to recap again, we took uh, one image. By the way, you can actually take multiple training images and uh, do exactly what I showed you earlier, except you concatenate you know, your, your uh, rows in that case. So I'm not going to go through that exercise, but what we have done is took uh, uh, loaded a training image created an empty data frame and filled the data frame with a bunch of columns and each column corresponds to a different feature that describes uh, the image with uh, column number one being the original pixel values, column number two, three, four, five, up to column number 33, all were, were Gabor responses from the image by applying various Gabor kernels. And then uh, we applied, uh, we extracted canny edge or applied canny edge detector onto the image and uh, added that uh, column and so on. And finally, the last column that was added was uh, the label column where we imported the uh, trained mask and then added that as uh, the label because this is our, uh, the value that we are trying to predict or trying to train this algorithm. And then we defined our dependent variable as Y as the label column. And every other column was uh, uh, X because we dropped Y uh, in this case, I mean, the label column in this case. And then we divided that into X train, X test. I mean, or we divided this entire data into uh, training and testing subsets. And we use the training subset to train a random forest classifier and we save the model. OK, or we generated a model or we fitted a model where using the training data set. And then we did some prediction using the testing data set and compared the accuracy by comparing the Y from the test uh, data set and the prediction result. And uh, we also looked at which features were kind of important for us. Uh, and then uh, we pickled the model, meaning we stored it for future use. And this is exactly what we are going to use uh, to segment our images. Now, but we, to segment our images, we need to generate the same set of uh, features, right? The only way we can segment an image is by taking these original images and uh, creating a data frame that has exactly the same set of features. So that is our step right now. And once we do that, then we can go ahead and predict it. Okay, so for step one, I'm going to create a copy of this file. Okay, and I'm gonna call this predict, okay? ML segmentation tutorial. And here, let me go ahead and zoom in. So you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so here let me start by editing what I have, okay? Uh, first of all, let's ignore these two images because we are going to put this in a loop to read a whole bunch of images. And uh, starting right around here, let's actually create a function because that's the easiest way to put things in loop. So instead of doing one by one, let's actually create a function called, uh, let's just call this feature extraction. Okay, so when I call this function, it's going to return my uh, data frame of all the features uh, applied onto my original image. So feature extraction and the input here is going to be an image, okay, that we are going to supply later. And now everything would be part of our function. So there you go. I'm going to put some tab over there. And my image two is equal to, I'm going to put a tab. I'm going to tab this here. So, and, and it's actually 
yeah, that seems to be working fine, right? So the first, uh, it's going to read an image and create an empty data frame. And to that empty data frame, it's going to add uh, the pixels, I mean, reshape the original image into one single column, add the pixels and call the column original image. It's very important to have the same names and same type of, you know, features extracted. Otherwise, obviously, you're not, uh, you're not applying the same uh, model to the same structure, okay? And then, uh, from now on, I'll just hit tab because everything is part of this function. That's it. Okay, I think this should work. Let's go ahead and uh, hit tab because we are generating a whole bunch of Gabor filters right there. And then we are doing that. And then let's keep doing the same for canny edge and everything else. Okay, so let's, uh, you can define multiple functions, by the way, but because I already have this code, I'm going to, I'm going to, just use what I have here. Okay, so why is it struggling? Undefined name DM. Oh, okay. So it's just taking some time to update. That's pretty much it. Okay, so let me continue. Continue hitting the tab. Uh, okay, I promise we'll get there sometime. Okay, uh, and we're not using variants anyway. Okay, so I don't need the labeled uh, image. Uh, obviously, there is no labeled image, right? I mean, we are trying to predict this, so I don't need to add this column anyway because uh, that's used for training purposes. So I'm going to delete these lines up to here. And then, uh, you know, for any function, we need to return something. In this case, let's return our data frame. So that should be it. That should be it. And uh, all of this uh, that we have down here where we uh, uh, define the X and Y and training data set, testing data set, none of that matters anymore because now we are working on unknown data, okay? So let me completely delete everything all the way down here and uh, let's uh, add some lines. First of all, let's get our images. Where is our input image, okay? So let's uh, bring them down here. Okay, again, I hope I'm not confusing. When you type this and practice this, things start make hopefully making sense to you. Now, uh, again, I covered this specific topic of reading multiple files from a folder in a couple of my previous vi uh, videos. So I'm not, again, going to explain every little step, but glob is the uh, library that I'm gonna use. And we are also going to import pickle right because we need to load the pickled file that we uh, that we pickled in the last uh, uh, video and uh, matplotlib uh, did i no i don't think we imported that I'm not sure if we need this but let's go ahead and do this anyhow uh, pyplot uh, as plt okay import pyplot as plt so so far so good now, what do we need to uh, do? Let's start by importing the uh, pickled file. So we called the file name as, uh, I think, I shouldn't have deleted those, but it's called sandstone underscore model. Okay, sandstone underscore model. Okay, that should do. And then how do we load the model? Again, I've done this in the previous tutorial, so. P I C K L E pickle dot load and I'm going to load the file name right or I can uh, sorry I have to open it first open okay file name in what mode in the reading binary mode okay I think that should do so now that the model is opened sorry let me create some room here so it's easier for you to see okay so file name sandstone model, and I'm going to open my sandstone underscore model in the reading mode, uh, I mean, uh, binary mode, and we are all set. So now I need to just step through the folder. So I'm gonna create my uh, a variable called path, and uh, let me just double check. It's under, I'm in this folder, so it's under images and train images. All my uh, images that need to be segmented, okay? So slash train underscore images and uh, let's only look for tiff files i mean all the files in there are tiff anyway so this should define the path so what do you i mean what do we want to do for that path we want to step through for each file okay in glob dot glob of path okay go through this and do what okay so this line is nothing but okay uh, go through each 
uh, file and do something okay so do what image one is nothing but cv2.imread again if you remember this is the line i'm just basically typing instead of one single file name i'm just going through step through multiple files that's all i'm doing here okay so imread read file okay and then my image equals to remember we converted that to color okay so i mean we converted that to gray sorry not color image one so take image one and convert that into gray level so r underscore bg r to g r a y right so again uh, all i did is just these two lines that's pretty much it except instead of typing this entire file name i just did file uh, uh, which is uh, nothing but individual file in uh, this folder that's it so let me delete these two now that i'm done doing that task up there so that's it now uh, uh, once the file is there now we need to do feature extraction on this and uh, how do we do feature extraction my x equals to feature what, what did we call the function feature underscore extraction right so that's what we called it so let's go ahead and call it here feature extraction and our input is going to be our image which is nothing but our gray level image right there okay so x is nothing but call the function do feature extraction so what does the function return it returns a data frame okay so the our result is equal to once we have the data frame what do we do load model right this is the model so it loads this pickle model and then do what predict again i've done we we did some a little bit of this in the previous tutorial except now we are putting that in a for loop while stepping through each file okay that's it so this is my result and again this result is going to be a single column so let's go ahead and uh, reshape it segmented equals to result dot reshape and reshape it to what shape to whatever my original shape was so reshape to my original uh, image shape and uh, uh, that should do it but let's save these images um, I'm gonna just say plt dot m save okay and where do we want to save this under images and uh, what's the folder name called under images it's segmented with an uppercase s so let's segmented slash now uh, we defined the path now i want to add a name mm, I'm, I'm just thinking okay let's just do this okay so name save segmented file under uh, cmap of jet let's say oops there you go does everything make sense uh, i just did name i didn't explain this but i'm going to explain that in a second okay uh, because i want to save this image under the same name as original except i want to split it uh, let me explain this okay let's open the train images it's sandstone underscore versa 0000.tiff i just want to split this file at some point maybe uh, at this point sandstone e underscore let's split this and then just add 000 or uh, and then add 1234 or something okay so that's why i just uh, and then let's define our name is nothing but file dot split and where do we want to split this at e underscore let's say okay i hope this works uh, i'm typing i'm thinking as i'm typing here so let's uh, go ahead and uh, name uh, one okay yeah that's that's uh, hopefully should work let's run this and start looking at our images under segmented folder so let me go back segmented and uh, hopefully the images should show up one by one there you go that's the first one versa four zeros dot tiff okay that's good so zero zero five zero dot tiff so as you can see the images just uh, keep coming in okay just for the fun of it let's open the zero zero five zero and then look at the original image and see if it actually did a good job so this is the 50th image in this slice 
so let's see zero zero five zero there you go and let's put these two side by side so the bright regions the uh, the light blue region which is the quartz the clays that are in yellow or greenish lime color right there this seems to uh, yeah that's a pretty good job as you can see okay so uh, in summary again after the five series we have performed image segmentation using traditional machine learning approach where we generated a bunch of features from our input images and then trained a machine learning algorithm, in this case, random forest, and then saved the model and used that model to segment a whole bunch of images in a folder. Okay, so I hope you found these series of videos to be uh, useful. And uh, for limited amount of training data, like for example, in this case, I used only one or two. Even if you have like 20 trained images, the traditional machine learning beats deep learning. Okay, if you have like more than 100 images for training, let's say, then you can start thinking about using deep learning, you know, UNet or whatever your favorite deep learning approach is. But if you have a limited amount of training data, which I believe is true for most part, I think this is the most uh, uh, valuable uh, or most important uh, approach, I should say, or uh, efficient approach for segmenting your images where you get, you leverage, you know, the the greatness of uh, Gabor, where you can use the texture, you know, uh, to to perform the segmentation. So anyway, uh, I hope you found this tutorial to be useful, and uh, please go ahead and code yourself, uh, uh, and and then and then see how it's working. I'm intentionally not sharing the code on GitHub, despite getting many requests, because. I know you are lazy. You just want the code. You just want to copy it. No, watch the video. Type every line. Believe me, it takes, uh, uh, you know, even if you spend half an hour, one hour doing that, you'll remember that forever. Okay, so please go ahead and put in the work to understand exactly what's going on so you can uh, uh, you can segment your images yourself and not rely on any other third party software or any other pre configured software. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. Please like these videos uh, and uh, subscribe to my channel. And it's very encouraging whenever I see new subscribers adding. Thank you very much.